नमस्ते टू एवरीवन नमस्ते कुमार भैया गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन जी भैया स्टार्ट भैया नमस्ते भैया so we'll have a look at the assignment that was shared yesterday in fact we got a little late in sharing the assignment we could share only at night but the discussion that we had yesterday so we had been discussing various sources of happiness and then we started discussing about prosperity so the assignment was observe how often you are seeking happiness from outside sources for example pleasing or favorable sensations through the body and through favorable feeling from others like attention appreciation etc note how long this can be maintained for also note what you do when the pleasing sensation or favorable feeling is not available to you anymore do you perhaps try to escape from this unpleasing feeling of feeling or lack of pleasant sensation are you perhaps avoiding certain people or situations are you caught up in this excitement escape loop does this seem to help you or are you still somewhat un uncomfortable within what appears to be a lasting solution to all such instances so this is something that we had discussed yesterday and we took the assignment for that essentially what we are trying to do from day one we are trying to explore whether happiness is my innate nature or am i looking at it as an external influence and trying to be happy though momentarily from some external sources and there are two primary external sources one is the favorable feeling from others and the other is favorable sensation from the body we have five sense organs in the body and we try to get happiness out of these sense organs and we can see that whenever i try to be happy through sensation there is some limitation to it it is not continuous it is indefinite there is no point of satisfaction there is no completion point as such there and there is dependence outside similarly when i look at happiness as getting appreciation praise attention of others then also the same thing applies there is no point of completion there is no definiteness there is no continuity there is dependence outside so you'll see that in such situations we are not at ease with ourselves we are restless because we have to run outside for happiness every time now we all are into the process of exploration and we are trying to make the source of happiness innate to us by ensuring right understanding and right feeling in us we are trying to come out of this loop you'll see that people who are not into exploration are somehow taking this as achievement how often they are able to get happiness from outside to what extent how much they can spend for it they take it as an achievement they make it a target isn't it and when they are unhappy because essentially it is not something which is going to ensure happiness and continuity and when doing this we suffer in relationships we suffer within ourselves in terms of depression anxiety psychological disorders so people might go for intoxication people might have so many states of misery within so they get caught up in this loop so go for attain go for happiness outside feel unhappy within so they go for intoxication and other things and then when they are fed up of this then they again try to get happiness from outside and things like this so essentially we all of us have to see how we can ensure happiness inside and that is only possible by right understanding right feeling and right thought that is understanding of harmony at all levels of being in other words as we go along we'll see how it is awakening to the activity of contemplation understanding and realization in other words it is by ensuring knowing in the self and if you look at it as we discuss further and we are already acquainted with this that we are coexistence of self and body so essentially body is an instrument it is not the source of happiness for me it is not the source of happiness for me and 
the achievement of the life is only when I'm able to awaken the higher level activities in me. I'm able to ensure right understanding, right feeling, right thought in me. Nice. So if you have any question pertaining to the discussion that we had yesterday, if you have any concern to share, any reflection therein, you may share. You can raise your hands. Yeah. So yeah, what I observed yesterday is that I think a lot about people around me and what they are going through. And in the uh, college, when I see that people are not taking their responsibilities seriously, and uh, I go into dialogue with them also that uh, you you should not do like this with students because exams are uh, nearby. So we, uh, we cannot disturb the students at this point of time. But despite all my efforts, the other is not understanding. And this is disturbing me. So uh, I am in disharmony. Yesterday I was in disharmony for a long time. I was observing myself where my feelings are going. But uh, can you help me like in such situations when I am observing others? They are not saying anything to me. Uh, but when I am observing their behavior, from outside that is also concerning me so how to deal with this via yeah so you are getting irritated inside by looking at their conduct yes now yes they are doing something as per their level of competence they are doing something yes. as per their level of competence and we are getting irritated so one thing is that if i am getting irritated it is my lack of competence Yes, yes. So, this I could observe yesterday, Bhiya. Yes, nice. Baby. So here I have to see again, feel more closely if I go for it, that essentially they don't want to make anyone unhappy. But they have some inclination. And they are, it is so compelling that they are not able to go without it. So they are doing something as per their uh, inclination towards music or something and that's how they are creating disturbance for others also so we have to understand that they like right feeling right feeling they are trying to look for happiness outside we can make a program we can do something so that their conduct is transformed or at least uh, for that time we can send some message to them so that they do not act otherwise they are able to be supportive to other students also so we can think of some program or we can activate some people also in the system so that uh, their conduct is taken care of. But it's not really irritated within. But good that you observed it. So it is certainly something to do with our level of competence. <coughs> we need to improve it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Sometimes Bhaiya, I feel that the more I am moving forward, the more something is pulling me back. <laughs> Despite all the efforts I am making. But, uh, no, it's not that the more you are moving forward, something is pulling. Basically, you are becoming more and more aware. Earlier, you might be having this kind of feeling and you were ignoring it. Now you are aware of it. And when you see, you see that the more we are aware of the state of the self, by oneself naturally, I can see a lot of discomfort inside. I can lot of contradiction, lot of disharmony uh, um, inside. So that makes me aware of my present state of the self. So it could be disturbing in the beginning, but at least I am aware of it now and I have to work for it. Yes. And yes, some of the sanskars that I am able to see now are so deep rooted that I find it very difficult to change them. Yes, that's what we are here for. In fact, yes. All of us have certain sanskars which get transformed fast. There are certain sanskars which are very deep rooted. Yes, yes, many are many are there in me. I can observe now that many are there which are so deep rooted that it's a struggle for me to change them. Yes, but we'll see 
that ultimately the roots of those sanskars are preserved by us only so however deep that may be it is my decision to preserve those sanskars yes the moment i decide that this is not desirable and i can see the right sanskar there i can see the solution there then they simply evaporate however deep it may be because i have been nurturing it i have been watering the deep roots of the sanskar so you'll see that there are several branches of those sanskars and we ourselves have been justifying that we ourselves have been somewhat preserving nurturing those things like one major sanskar could be like i am the body now as you myself to the body i have been nurturing so many assumptions in me but the more i become aware this gradually becomes loose this kind of sanskar and once i am able to see myself from the body it simply vanishes yes when i am able to see that i am not the body i am myself different from the body it simply vanishes yes ji ji bhaiya ji thank you thank you bhaiya nice ji ji namaste bhaiya good morning to everyone am i audible bhaiya ji clearly audible bhaiya as didi said same thing happened yesterday also uh, like it used to happen um, most often but yesterday that incident just make me unhappy like uh, uh, means when i came uh, means i was associated with an organization i have already mentioned earlier and uh there uh, like in this organization i observed that faculty members are very much friendly towards their students and maybe uh, that is rightly applicable in present era but the way i have been nurtured or the sanskar i have received from my educational journey we are always uh like guided like whenever you are going somewhere you have to take the permission especially if you are entering into the uh, like uh, faculty cabin you have to knock or like if you are going outside of the class definitely you have to inform your faculty members taking permission you can go outside and uh, here i observe that students are not that much eager to uh, take permission before entering into the class or maybe the Uh, uh like faculty cabin and same thing if they are getting any call they are used to take the call inside the class only and i always normally try to make them understand that this is not the proper etiquette and of course if we talk about the manner we should not but yesterday what happened like two students they came and without knocking the faculty cabin they entered and uh, the concerned faculty also entered after that i was i was indulged in some work urgent work but suddenly i don't know what happened i reacted in a different way and uh, in front of them and most probably one parent also came i was not knowing i suddenly i asked that uh, what's your problem to take permission before entering into the cabin and where i was sitting means uh, in my faculty position with me six faculty members are there so all together seven faculty members we sit then i don't know what happened yesterday but i reacted very badly like earlier i used to poke them but yesterday my reaction was uh, quite like embarrassing or maybe the parent came that's why i was embarrassed uh, later on and i asked and suddenly the faculty member said that man see they are coming frequently you are not there and just because of that they came uh, that concerned faculty member was defending them then i suddenly said that uh, maybe you have you are not familiar with such kind of things ma'am but uh, i don't know why i can't take it so it's better if your students are not able to take uh, permission especially when i am into the cabin then i would suggest uh, that if they have any kind of discussion they can call you so my reply was like that and students were also uh, like uh, means from their body language what i observed that they were not uh, they have not taken it in a taken it in a positive way and later on when i left the room for some reason 
uh, and uh, when again i came back after a uh, long time i saw that faculty members are uh, talking about it and when i just entered into the room um, then they just uh, kept them some silent but uh, like their body language was like all the faculty members they were supporting this thing and they were talking about this uh, approach of mine on uh, in my absence now the fact is that this is the story of yesterday and it happened many times also but i try to uh, like avoid this thing many times but why i don't know why i can't uh, change myself and due to which of course i am getting uh, like uh, mentally disturbed and which is causing unha- unhappiness now how i can work on it although i try to ignore many times but i can't where are you teaching didi uh in op general university raigarh so in raigarh okay. nice so see <laughs> whenever we enter in some organization there are some prevalent norms which may not be in coherence with our acceptance so if you feel that it is not okay it has to be looked into so what we can do we can have a meeting together and also discuss it so maybe yes. uh, when these occurrences are taking place we could have a discussion and we can just raise the basic issues so what is naturally acceptable to be friendly to the students or to have the flow of affection for the students now friendliness essentially is not affection it may be the case yes, that yes. teacher and student are friendly and both are smoking together yes now, yes this may not be desirable <laughs> isn't it True, true, true. true. Or students using faculty, faculty using those words for students. So this is not desirable. So we can raise such basic issues. We want to have affection for the students. We want to have trust and respect for the students. Similarly, the students also want this naturally. <clears throat> What could be the right program? So let us discuss it. I will suggest that you have a meeting with your colleagues and discuss these issues. These are some common issues. We we'll see that. Okay. nowadays even for getting admission more and more in the colleges mm-hmm. the management also sometimes promotes such practices or some of the yes, practices yes. yes because now the students feel as if you know, they are the payers and the uh, management or the colleges is the buyer you know because <laughs> they are providing the fees yes, yes. management true, is giving that education return so this kind of feeling might be there so discuss it with your colleagues and see what they are feeling is what they are thought is and then make a program and this is not the first time raya like as i mentioned this is not the first time like seven uh, faculty members are sitting except me means including me sorry one more faculty is there and she is from odisha so most of the time she used to uh, like uh, uh, take my side that yes ma'am is saying the same thing but after that they means before that before uh, she has provided her feedback regarding this uh, like knocking and all people used to talk about that and she told me that ma'am it's better ki don't react because they are making it uh, like a different kind of story and they are uh, like saying students also that ma'am is young enough that's why she is too much street and rude uh, just ignore her i was surprised and you know one day like i went to the 6th uh, semester classes and suddenly like in between the class i saw two students came and uh, they sat on their uh, sitting position then uh, like i was discussing something uh, simply i stopped and then i asked that um, why they are late and then i asked that who allowed you into, uh, into the class then they mentioned that uh, ma'am we used to do in this way also this way, this way only then i said you don't take permission then they said no uh, because faculty members said that if you are coming late don't take permission that will disturb us so it it better uh, you can come and sit and again if you would like to go outside you can go don't take or uh, don't disturb us i was simply surprised like uh, is it true and then i saw the same thing first day i experienced that two three days back i saw suddenly on girl uh, i think she was having a call or something else she just went away 
and after some time she came and asked me that ma'am you have not taken the attendance then after mm -hmm. that i just caught her then when i asked she also replied the same thing so sometimes i don't know why i get very much disturbed like uh, initial level it was something like most of the time students are just because of uh, you know fed up by that every time i'm poking that no you should not do in this way or every time you should ask uh, take permission uh, but now it's like my goodness like things are uh, we are trying to nurture some good values and just because of that reason we are here attending the session and we are trying to transform all those learning to our next generation but this is how next generation are nurturing by the people so i get upset very much uh, anyways bhaiya thank you so much for your input nice nice i'll suggest that a sustainable solution here could be to introduce the course on human values there so organize self funded faculty development programs there at op jindal lagat in your institution and uh have more and more faculty uh, who get oriented with the inputs and also introduce sip and usp2 if it is not there so that we solve yes, the problem yeah. Yeah. yes bhai yeah, we are planning solution. otherwise this is just one issue we will be struggling with so many issues yes 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 this is only thank this you this is something i'll say superficial issue there could be some more deep rooted issues and <laughs> so Yes, yes, it's true. Deep rooted issues are also there, but I get yes. disturbed because we are nurturing them. Now, ultimately, they are going to represent us. Like this is an industry based education, and here uh, this university located itself in a industry built area, and their placement is also like they used to get job in very good um, uh, institution or industry. So my concern is that, and we are higher for. training session also like people those who are working at um, in managerial so posts how many faculty have got oriented with uhp presently uh, uh last time like we have conduct a session and before that i get to know from the register office like six faculty members are there who have attended the uhp one session and when online. me and online online yes 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 they are having yeah. certificate but i don't yeah. know how much they have understand or comprehend it but i have yeah. under, identified three faculty members one faculty member from humanities he is doing it genuinely and there is another faculty member from mechanical department we three we are trying our level best to uh, like introduce this thing in fact uh, me and one of my colleague from humanities department both of us we started uhb uh, like and value added course 30 hours um, um uh, it's a uh, uh, course for 30 hours uh, designated for the all the students he is affiliated to aict or ugc or both what is the both. case now both both, both yes yes yeah and you are into engineering uh, branch basically i belong to humanities but as uh, i am from humanities so we do take classes in management as well as engineering also Okay. Now that UGC is also promoting it, the city already has been. So yes. you talk to your management and say that this is a mandatory course in the second year in engineering as well as uh, management, and let us go for it. Yes, and we, the faculty of management, as I mentioned, that one of interested faculty, uh, he is from mechanical department. We three are try like we have already discussed, and we will. introduce the sip during the student induction program also and we have also planned that we will have a faculty development session so that faculty would understand ki what exactly this is and how it is relevant for the students so instead of you taking it because you are still exploring uh, so you can uh, properly arrange a 3 day self funded introductory fdp and then let all the faculty go through it we can have maybe two or three such workshops so that all the faculty one by one are able to go. how many faculty are there all together uh all together more than 200 bhaiya because uh, many departments are there and that is one fdp let us know so you talk to the regional coordinator in the central region like iladidi is there and i think one more regional coordinator is there you talk to them and then plan it that would be a sustainable solution then we'll get sure, the bhaiya. yeah Solution to other issues also. 
Yes, like, yes. How can I get connected with Ila Didi? So we'll share the contact number of the regional coordinator. Okay, bhai. Tarabia, if you have me kindly share. Yes, bhai. I'm sharing in the chat. Thank you, bhaiya. Definitely, I will talk to the management again. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Nice, Didi. So, nice. There were two sharings here with regard to the assignment that we took yesterday. Now, we can go to the content part. We had started discussing the feeling of prosperity yesterday. May I kindly put up the slide? Yes. So, just uh, put the slide just uh, before this. The three sources of happiness. Yeah. So now that we are able to see that these are two possibilities. One is the source of happiness being innate to me, based on right understanding and right feeling. And the other could be like it is being something external to me when I'm looking for happiness from outside. Now, whether I'm looking for respect outside or the feeling of respect is contemplated in me, I'm able to see it within me. That is something that I have to see. Whether I am begging for trust from people or the trust of the feeling of trust is stated in me. So I have to make out. You know? So now that many of us already have attended some previous sessions also, and we have been reiterating this, we have been talking about in VHU2 also, UHU3 also. So essentially, we need to ensure these feelings within trust, respect, affection, fear, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude, and love. In place of begging it outside, borrowing it from outside, isn't it? Similarly, we are able to see that sensation has a role to play in rightly utilizing my body, in nurturing, protecting my body. So when I get some sensation from the body, I can make out the state of the body from that. And then I can take care of the body. And the body is also uh, acting as an instrument when I'm interacting with the world outside. And sensation, of course, has a role to play there. So with right understanding, I'm able to make the right utilization of the sensation that I get from the body. I'm also able to see my relationship and place of borrowing the feelings from others. <clears throat> you know, I'm able to ensure these feelings within and then able to share it. So this would mean that I am now living with human consciousness when the source of happiness is within me. Otherwise, I am somewhat living with animal consciousness because I am caught up in loops of temporary excitement and then escapes. Nice. Now with this clarity, we can go further to understand the feeling of prosperity. We started discussing the feeling of prosperity yesterday. So prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility. So we need to make out the need for physical facility rightly. So one important question is that, have I been able to make out the need for physical facility rightly? And how do I do that? So I can see that physical facility is need of the body, not mind, one thing. So one important thing to understand is the that physical facility is not meant for happiness. Are you able to see this? Physical facility is not meant for happiness. It is meant for fulfilling the needs of the body. You can respond in the chat box. Are you able to see this? So with physical facility, I'm able to nurture my body, I'm able to protect my body, I'm able to rightly utilize my body. That's all. So a few things to observe. One, am I looking for physical facility for happiness? Or am I looking for physical facility to fulfill the needs of the body? Try to make it out.
this is very important. The moment I associate the feeling of happiness with physical facility, you'll see that I get enslaved. By that very thought, I get enslaved. I am dictated. I am dictated by something outside of me for happiness. If I have this kind of house, I am going to be happy, else not. If I have this kind of car, I am going to be happy, else not. If I have this kind of garment, I am going to be happy, else not. If I have this kind of accessory, I am going to be happy, else not. These kinds of conditions we try to put within us for the sake of happiness. One thing you know, to observe. Second thing, physical facility can have only three purposes. It is either for nurturing the body or protecting the body or rightly utilizing the body. So find out, am I looking for physical facility only for these three purposes or something else? Physical facility is not for happiness. It is for nurturing, protection, right utilization of the body. So, see, it may be the case that we are into the process of exploration, but we st still might be associating at certain moments in the day happiness to physical facility. For example, you purchased some kind of flower pot in the house and, I, and you feel very happy when you look at it. Now, a child broke it and you suddenly feel very unhappy. You feel angry on the child. Or do you had put it in the drawing room and were expecting words of praise from a guest and you could not receive those words of praise? Maybe <coughs> somebody said something otherwise. They have decided it. So, you see that to fetch happiness from outside, we might be arranging facilities in the house. I'm not naming anything because it would be it could be something personal to you. But it may be the case that we are trying to be happy by looking at certain things, by touching certain things, by sensing certain things. Now you can see how I get dependent on facility for happiness. So two things we mentioned. One, am I looking at physical facility for happiness or am I looking at physical facility to fulfill the needs of the body? Second thing, what am I looking for for fulfilling the needs of the body? Is it for nurturing the body, protecting the body, rightly utilizing the body or something else? So now I can very much categorize all the facilities in my house in three heads. Are they meant for nurturing the body? or protecting the body, or rightly utilizing the body. I can very much make out. Yes. Is there any sharing? Is this clear? So one assignment could be like, I can look at all the facilities in my house and try to make out what is the purpose. What is the purpose? Is it for nurturing the body or protecting the body or rightly utilizing the body? Namaste Ji. Namaste Bhaiya. Namaste. The prosperity in the sense Bhaiya, uh, for nurturing the body or protecting the body, uh, some people are not having minimum things for nurturing their body. For example, they are struggling for their food. Uh, they are not having basic facilities. At the time, uh, they are feeling unhappy. So uh, happiness is innate, but this external force is uh, uh, dominating. That is uh, lack of food and other basic facilities. In such case, uh, how can we uh, say it is purely innate? Uh, I want to know about this, Bhaiya. Yes, nice, Bhaiya. 
so there could be some people who are not having sufficient physical facilities to nurture the body or protect the body or right utilize the body so we have to look into the problem how this state is emerging why we are not able to fulfill the needs so we can see that each one of us has limited needs of the body in terms of physical facility and we are also able to produce more than what is required so if the feeling of prosperity is not there i am not able to produce more than what is required i have to look into the basic reasons behind it isn't it why am i all not able to nurture my body rightly hmm. why am i not able to produce more than what is required yeah. so it could be because of lack of confidence in me also you yeah. have to keep okay. it open yeah isn't it let me share one example here that we are conducting the course on human values in iit kanpur last summer and the students while discussing about prosperity asked that what you are saying the teacher was there what you are saying makes sense for us because we are studying in iit and you are able to pay fee in terms of lakhs of rupees but how about the half hungry people you know how does this apply to them how can they be prosperous how can they be happy so they were given a project that okay let us survey some people who we feel are half hungry people within the campus or in the nearby areas and find out what is the reason behind their pathetic state mm-hmm. presently so the yeah. students went there and talked to some people and it uh, like the project came out to be very successful because it brought light on certain important issues there was one person who was earning uh, let's say about 10000 rupees per month Yeah. But he was spending a lot of money on drinking. Yeah. If he did not have this practice of drinking, habit of drinking, then he would not be in this pathetic state. Second thing, <clears throat> what was found was that there was one person uh, who had three or four children, and earlier he had two daughters, and then he had a third child, a son, probably three children. so when he was asked he said that since he wanted to have a son a male member in the family as our child so that our heritage continues so that's why we had to produce three children so you can see that now he does not have enough food for the three children but he had to go for the third child you know why just for the sake of having a son a male child in the family it could be because of some pre condition so if this state is there we have to find out why we are into this state isn't it now there could be some societal problems also but again we have a role to play in the society it could be the case that there is differentiation there is exploitation in the society so am i just trying to be happy from some external sources or am i working to resolve the situation in the society so if that kind of state is there i have to make a program proactively isn't it yes priya this is a practical question from one of my relatives when i was uh, inculcating this uhc uh, that yeah. person is not having any bad habit but I, I, as you said uh, he has more children unable to feed them so that yes. is the yes. yes so why in fact when i go to my office i can see at the crossroads many would be sitting there and one lady you know in a kind of very pathetic condition with three or four children five or six children would be there and they would be begging or now that they, nowadays they have a practice of selling pen you know a simple pen that might cost two or three rupees they would be selling for 10 rupees to all the passers by and uh, it has become another kind of begging and i i found out one day that it has become a kind of racket here in ncr once i was passing by i was walking on foot and i found one person was uh, trying to you know monitor them how to beg how not to beg so they are into this pathetic condition why are they producing too many children why are they begging and this has become a kind of uh, practice in metro cities also it has become a kind of racket so you have to look into the, all these problems clearly and i'm not saying that like all those who are not having enough physical facilities are into this only there could be a variety but then again mm-hmm. we have to go and look into the root cause why it is happening 
yes bhai yeah. some agricultural families so they they are losing the product sometimes due to calamities or something so that also may be there so variety of reasons yes bhai yeah. now yes, you can sir. see that like when we are cultivating we are doing farming so you can see that these calamities are always possible so that's how we can join together and make some policy there are already some policies in place may or may not be implemented rightly isn't it there are some policies in place so we have to join together and make some policies let me also say that there is one region of bidar you know and farmers are committing suicide there because they have so many loans that they are not able to pay off the government has been waiving off the loans also but still uh, the farmers have been committing suicide for a long time there in that region now if you study the root cause of that problem of deprivation in that area you see that at some point of time it was called as a uh, white gold belt of india because cotton was grown and it was grown in sufficient quantity and the farmers were doing very well in that area it was called a white gold belt of the country now uh, and variety of cotton came there which is called as the bt cotton biotech cotton and the production went high by using bt cotton so all the farmers in that area and you know, opted for bt cotton now this bt cotton had a better produce but it had ill effects on the soil uh, there some more problems maybe the seeds are not fit for growing so you have to import the seeds every time and we can look into the technical problems associated and the quality of cotton was also not good so earlier it was being imported by some countries and then they stopped imports so they were not able to go for bt cotton again and when they tried to go for the old variety of cotton again the soil was not fit for that now when the when the income suddenly went up in that area they went for lavish lifestyle also for some time and they were suddenly without money to feed their family and they had taken loans also because you see that on one hand when the income goes up on the other hand the lavishness the life also goes up and people start borrowing money for unnecessary things also so all those things got coupled and then they were into a very wretched state after some time and then they started committing suicide i am not aware of the state now in 2024 but i heard earlier Maybe five or six years, five or six years back, that in every two days, three farmers were committing suicide. So this kind of state was there, isn't it? So we have to see how our lack of right understanding, right feeling, causes problems for us. Yeah. Finally, they need to change their competence for getting yes. basic needs. Basic needs. So we have to work on right understanding and right feeling. is it now you can see we make programs in our living if the program is not based on right understanding we are going to run into problems the strange thing is that the farmer who is also committing suicide you know and you can see children of rich people also committing suicide rich people also committing suicide we keep on getting such news and there are many who are on the verge of committing suicide they have they have been getting such thoughts so people have such problems but again it is going to the lack of right understanding right feeling in us and another important thing that we have to work for right education now because when the society is able to see that happiness is not to be ensured through physical facility it is ensured through right understanding right feeling self is not the same as body and the needs of the body are limited and they can be very much fulfilled Isn't it? This kind of education is required. There are many in the society today who have much, much more than what they require, but yeah. they do not have the feeling of sharing with the rest of society. There are some who have less than required, and they are struggling for survival. While altogether, if you see, the production is much more than what is required. The data that we share in the workshop also that the food production is six okay. times the requirement. Still, people are dying of hunger. Yeah. and we can also see that one third of the food production is being wasted away yes, right. it means 
price the food that could be eaten by the entire humanity is getting wasted away. It is certainly due to lack of human relationship, certainly due to lack of right understanding. So it's not owing to the production of food that people are dying of hunger. It is owing to the lack of human relationship. To be rich, people are exploiting the rest of society. They are beguiling the rest of society. They are exploiting the rest of society. No equitable distribution. See, there is no need for equitable distribution also. The need is for understanding the needs of the body and fulfill it through production. As per the role in the society, as per the role in the family, you know, as per the role in the nature, you may have different kinds of physical facilities and requirement. But then it is based on right understanding. No need to keep physical facilities at the focus. There have been revolutions on this planet where people have been trying to make equal distribution of the, fam the facilities. But it has not worked because essentially people are still looking for happiness through facilities and it can never be equal among people, among families, among societies, it can never be equal. So I have to understand the needs of physical facility and I have to produce more than what is required. That is all. And I have the skill, I have the competence to do this. That is something to be ensured through education. So two things you observe. One, whether I am looking at physical facility as a source of happiness or as a need of the body. And second thing, am I able to see that physical facility is required only for three purposes, for nurturing the body, protecting the body and rightly utilizing the body. Something I have to make out, isn't it? Thirdly, I'll say that I have I been able to make out the need for physical facility in totality. Like for we as grown-ups, we are into jobs. Now, many of us are on the verge of retirement. Some of us would be planning for retirement. So have we been able to make out how much facility will we require in our lifespan? There could be some calculation that we can make. And for that, we have to work out certain needs. Unless I'm able to work out those needs, I will not feel prosperous. For example, how much do I have to spend for education of my children? How much do I have to spend for marriage of my children? <clears throat> how much do I have to spend for shelter? How much do I have to spend for health? Or how much do I have to spend for my daily needs? So all that I have to make out. Otherwise, I may keep on <clears throat> working for fulfilling the needs of the body, being unaware of the limit. Within me, I am imagining that I am doing it only for the body, not for happiness. But in some sense, I am dictated by the environment outside. And I am trying to, uh, again, look for happiness through facilities. I am dictated by the prevalent norms. I am dictated by the present state. And I'm still looking for happiness from external sources to get some favorable feeling. For example, if we have to marry our children, then how much to spend? Now, I may be dictated by the prevalent norms that, okay, at least this much has to go. Now, you see, recently, one person in our society uh, arranged a pre-marriage ceremony spending 1,000 crores of rupees. Now, if I start looking at it as a mark of success in life, as a mark of stature you know, or dignity in the society, then we may again start planning for have marriage like this. Maybe not 1,000 crores, but at least 1 crore, <laughs> isn't it? And we consider it as an achievement. So I have to look into all these things. Currently, I am seeing that people have to accumulate a lot, they have to spend a lot, and they are worried because of few major heads of expenses. Like one could be education of children. How much to spend for the education of my child? And if I'm not able to see that education is ensuring right understanding, right feeling, <clears throat> how much do I spend for education of my child can never be limited. The more I accumulate, the more deprived I feel because now I have no new, uh, uh, more and more new plans for educating my child. I'm not able to see that education is meant for ensuring right understanding, right feeling. And I'm maybe aware also that by this kind of education, the, 
this child of mine is never going to have right understanding and right feeling. But what can I do? I am under peer pressure. Everyone in the society is doing like this, so I have to do it. One thing. Second would be marriage of children. How much do I plan to spend in the marriage of my children? Now, if I am able to see that essentially the success of marriage relies in ensuring mutual happiness between husband and wife, not by having a lavish ceremony at the marriage place. So, I can make the right program for the marriage of my children. In fact, it so happens that we spend so lavish, lavishly in marriages and the marriages are not lasting anymore. Many marriages. Or they are on the verge of getting like uh, the couples are on the verge of getting separated though they are somehow managing because of social pressures because of social norms but they are or they have been thinking about divorces and things like that or there are issues like extramarital affairs there are fights in the family feuds in the family even though we spent a lot on the marriage of the children but they are not happy living together so what good has it done in fact when you arrange a marriage very lavishly and People from the society come to arrange. They are also under pressure. Oh, if this person has spent so much, I will also have to do something similar. In fact, if you arrange the marriage of one child very lavishly, how can the other child say that, okay, no need to do like this for me. You have to do something similar or even better for me. And families are caught up in like this, caught up in issues like this. So how much do I plan to spend for the marriage of my child? Thirdly, how much do I plan to spend for my health? Now you can just see that due to lack of feeling of self-regulation, people are having so many issues in health. They are having psychosomatic problems. And then they have to spend a lot <clears throat> in the old age. And they also, people also have the fear of death also because they are not able to see that body and self are two different things. So they have to accumulate a lot for ensuring health in the old age. That also may not have the limit. Now, for the sake of providing shelter, but lavishly, people may spend crores rupees, crores and crores of rupees for house or accessories or you know, uh, instruments. So again, there is no limit to it. And people also have feeling that whatsoever we do for the children, they are not going to help us in the old days now. How can we stay with our children in the old days? They might not treat us well. So they have to again say for themselves. So you'll see that for these five or six regions, people are not able to make out the need for physical facility rightly, the limit to it. And then they are busy all the time working for physical facility, suffering relationships, no rent of right understanding. When you talk to the people, they say that we are in pain, but what to do? I don't have time for ensuring right understanding. I'm caught up. I'm caught up so badly in my own programs. I'm caught up in my loops, which, I'm, which we have designed ourselves. So we have to look at these issues closely. You know? So three things I share. Am I looking at physical facility for happiness or am I looking at it as a need of the body? Second thing, there are three purposes for physical facility, nurturing, protecting, and right utilizing the body. Am I able to see this clearly or I am working for something otherwise? So one important task associated is that I have to evaluate the physical facilities in the house and see whether they are meant for three, three heads or something else. And thirdly, have I been able to make out the need for physical facility or so to say money largely for my whole life? And for that only I help, I try to help you by listing some of the heads for which we may have to spend lavishly if we do not have the right understanding. And then we have to see whether we are planning in a similar manner. So we all have to explore. We have to explore the way we are planning our rest of life, the way we are planning for order in the family, the way we are planning for the future of our children. So nice. So if you have any issues, if you have some concerns, some reflection, you can raise your hand and ask.
So we'll observe it today. So we have to evaluate the feeling of prosperity within. Do I feel prosperous? How often do I feel prosperous? In what terms I feel that I have more than required? In what terms I feel that I have less than what is required? So find it out for yourself. It is a doable exercise. We can see that uh, people enter into the process, <clears throat> enter into the process of self-exploration, but sometimes are not able to evaluate the needs of facilities rightly, and then well, they get caught up many times. So we have to really evaluate this. We have to make it out rightly, isn't it? So prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility. Let me share one example that one person was caught up on the charge of corruption here in Delhi NCR. And at the time when police investigated his wealth, they found that he has 1,000 houses. You can just imagine a person owning 1,000 houses. What does it mean for? If a person has 1,000 houses and he has to live in one house in one day and he does not have to use the house the other day, he has to keep rotating. <laughs> and it will take him about three years to so stay in all the houses at least once. And this kind of program has to be made. So if I'm not aware of the need for physical facility rightly, I may get caught up in such loops. I may get caught up in such desires. My own desires are enough to disturb me every time. My own desires are enslaving me. To find out, this is very important for us to make out. Plan for it. So I mentioned five to six heads for which you have to spend money. Plan for it, how much do I need to spend and what could be the solution therein. So, one question that has come is, is body a physical facility? So, no, I will not call body a physical facility. Body is a physiochemical entity. That is fine. It is my instrument. It is a unit of bio-order. And I require physical facilities for the body. So, work it out. I have shared some pertinent issues related to prosperity. We do not share things at length in our workshops to that extent because their people are getting introduced to the idea, the understanding of prosperity, the understanding of happiness. But here in such sessions, when we are trying to reflect closely at the reality, we have to get into the pertinent issues which have caught us you know, in our life, which uh, dictate our way of living. We have to really make out how self-organized we are and how dictated we are. So nice. It is going to be time for Hindi session. So I raised three pertinent issues related to the feeling of prosperity. We'll discuss it further as uh, we talk about the harmony of self and body. So nice, Bia. We can conclude for today. <laughs>